Welcome to the Living Legacy Podcast, where we feature wealth experts, investors, and entrepreneurs as they share their inspiring journey to living their best life. Now, let's get started with the show. Hey, everybody. Brian Foucher, host of the Living Legacy Podcast, where I feature top leaders across many industries. Now, I have Ty Pandel here of Credit Suite. Now, Ty is a good friend of mine, and but he's also an internationally known speaker and author, podcast show host, and business credit expert as well. Now, he has over 18 years of experience in the financial industry with credit, and he's recognized as an authority in business credit, uh, in business credit scoring, and also business credit repair. Uh, he's also the author of two popular books. Uh, one is called Perfect Credit, and the other one is Business Credit Decoded. He's often been interviewed on radio shows, news shows, TV programs, magazines, including Entrepreneur and Inc. He also currently serves as the CEO at Credit Suite, where he has helped and create and grow one of the biggest and most incredible and valuable business coaching operations in the United States. All right. All right. This episode is brought to you by the Living Legacy Association. Now, here at Living Legacy, our mission is to empower clients with the knowledge and the strategies to achieve financial prosperity. Now, whether you're looking to maybe save as much as you can on taxes, protect your current assets, or even identify investments and investing opportunities, that's what we're here to help you do. So to learn more, visit our website at livingatlegacyassociation.com or go to support at livingatlegacyassociation.com to reach out to us. All right, Ty, I want to thank you once again for being here on the show. I want to thank you for calling me your friend. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, um, man, we met what, man, it's been what, four or five years ago? It's been a long time. I, I still owe you money for for, for calling me your friend. At the there last you go. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been what, four or five years now we go back. Yeah. So it's been a lot of fun. That's crazy. Yeah, I know we met at, uh, obviously, uh, Board of Advisors, one of the mastermind groups. And uh, I should have saw you there last week. So it's pretty cool seeing you, man. Yeah, that was cool. I love going there every quarter, man. It's it's yeah. always high high power. Get to run into you and everybody else. That's cool. There's so much stuff we get out of that. So it's good, 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 good catching up and connect. Yeah, it was one of the better events I've been to uh, here in recent years, though. So I was pretty happy to, about it. So yeah, same. Now, that being said, business credit and uh, with what's going on around the world right now in the economy, the markets, everybody's you know talking about inflation and business and all this stuff. Credit is becoming a a hot topic. So. Uh, before I dive into that, really, how did you get into uh, entrepreneurship? How did you get into business credit as your as your focus? Well, so it's kind of interesting. The first company I ever owned was a mortgage company. I built it, you know, a lot of blood, sweat, tears, late nights. I built it up to a million dollar business where a lot of us want to be. And uh, and then the mortgage crisis occurred. And out of left field, I saw what it was like to have something you really have no control over uh, completely upturn your business. And it ultimately, I did jumbo loans, and those those literally just went away overnight. So uh, I went through the process of slowly shutting down my business. I had to shut down my offices. I had to lay off employees. Uh, and I probably used more of my personal money than I should have trying to keep those people employed as long as I could. And eventually just lost everything. And uh, made the same mistake a lot of business owners make. I personally guaranteed my debts. The lenders then came, cleaned out my bank accounts. They reported the debts on my personal credit report, ruined my personal credit, ruined my ability personally uh, on the financial side to recover. And, uh, and that was it, man. Pushed me almost to the point of, uh, of bankruptcy. So I came out of that and I, I got into the consumer credit space. And it might sound cliche, but like for me, it was, it was the first time I started doing business to help people instead of making money. Like I, I, I never experienced such pain and hurt. And I could go on and on about these crazy things that happen of electric shut off in the house with your wife's pregnant, all these things we went through. And I just wanted to rescue as many other people from pain as, as I could. Maybe that's part of my, part of my nature being a rescuer. Um, so ultimately, you know, I started a consumer credit business to help other people recover. And then what happened was clients asked about business credit. I looked into it, couldn't find any information. This was like 2012, any information about it anywhere. And when I did start to dive in deeper and figured out what it was and that it could have saved me, I just became really frustrated because I didn't know about it. I'd been in financial services a long time. I'd read about it. Nobody had ever told me about this. And, uh, and I was raised by really good parents who taught me that you never complain about a problem unless you're willing to produce a solution. And so I said, well, I'm going to figure this thing out. I'm going to teach it. So it's kind of interesting. I started to go learn everything. And then I would do a webinar on that topic. What is done in Bradstreet? Webinar on the topic. How do credit scores work? Here's a webinar on the topic. And put it on YouTube. And then the thing just kind of blew up. And, and before I know it, I created a software to help people and a company and, uh, and have now you know, grown it into a, to an eight-figure operation. So it's been a heck of a wild ride. Yeah. And I, I love the aspect of your journey where you talk about, hey, I went through this pain. Like we we go and try to do all these amazing things. We go through this pain. And yet 
we end up coming out of the other side and that that's part of the entrepreneurial journey that we have to go through for a lot of us. And I've been through that before, uh, you know, multiple seven figures, debt, what do you do about that kind of stuff? And then having to find those solutions, ultimately through that, you find your, for, for me, uh, you find your purpose and your calling. And ultimately, that's where true success comes from. That's where really it's, you can really expand what you're doing in that messaging. And you talked about helping people. And really, and so that's sort of what, why do what I do as well? Because I went through a lot of pain on the financial side, trying to invest money when I didn't know how to do it, didn't have the connections, didn't have the context. Nobody was the, nobody was really talking about this kind of stuff and ultimately lost everything. And then that set me on a journey to learn how do you truly build wealth? How do you build a legacy that you can see and live today? And I love your story. So that being said, so so business credit. So uh, what is what does Credit Suite really do? So what does Credit Suite? How do you work with clients mainly? So we've really, you know, it's interesting when I started this, how deep that rabbit hole goes. You know, and at first I was like, oh my gosh, people don't know about business credit. I need to teach that. And then the further I got into the weeds, the, the more I realized that this is just a really deep hole. And what I mean by that is that lenders use all kinds of information about us that we don't know. They're accessing check systems, credit report, Lexus, Nexus, credit report, yeah. SBFE. I mean, there's just so many things that we can talk about that most people don't even know exist. So lenders have all this data about us to make you all these decisions based on information we don't even know exists. Um, and, and so we really tried to even that score. So what we do at Credit Suites, we really focus on three things, all of which come down to the main core purpose of to get a business owner money. Uh, our belief is that if you want to start a business, you want to grow a business, you should be able to get the capital you need to do so uh, without all the factors that have got you turned down before. Mm -hmm. So the three things that we do is we work with a business owner to improve their fundability. Uh, most okay. loan applications are denied, mm -hmm. not because of income or credit or time in business, all the stuff we think that causes the denials. It's because uh, of things that are incongruent where the lender thinks it's fraud or the business just doesn't over just, just doesn't overall look credible. Uh, and that's the problem. And I was actually just talking to our team today, reading quotes from Bankrate and Forbes and Entrepreneur that all talk about the same thing. Like what lenders care about is the credibility of a business. So that's really what we work on is we work on improving the fundability, the things that usually get business owners denied. And that turns a lot of their denials almost immediately into approvals. Then at the same time, we deploy two strategies to get them capital. We start building business credit. And this is credit that's linked to their EIN. It's not linked to their social. It's not linked to them personally. They don't have to personally guarantee it. There's no personal credit checks or collateral needed or even cash flow. Like even a startup or nonprofit can get it. So we help a business owner through a, a tiered process to be able to obtain like really unlimited access uh, to capital through business credit. A 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 limit accounts for every type of credit you can imagine. And then at the exact same time, we help connect them with all types of financing they can get. So we're one of the only sources out there that works with every legitimate type of business funding out there. And we sit with the business owner, figure out what they're looking for. And then we, we're, we're really specialists on stacking funding, getting multiple different types of financing for that business owner uh, so they're able to get maximum capital. And if you put those three things together, it's what we do. We work on improving the fundability of the business, building business credit so the business can actually fund itself, and then actually getting the business owner qualified and the business qualified for all different types of financing that they can use uh, for growth and expansion as well. Awesome. So that being said, I want to clarify a couple of things just for some listeners here. So oftentimes when you get into business, you don't have a lot of the acumen around the business credit. You only have the experience with personal credit cards, getting a mortgage, a car loan. And so that, that experience doesn't lend itself very well to business credit because we do the same thing. So as an example, I have personally guaranteed significant six figures, seven figures even in my own business. Even to this day, I still carry some of that, but I've got a personal guarantee on it. Can you explain the difference between a personal guarantee and what kind of credit you're talking about? Sure. I think it's what, what you describe is, is the normal path of a business owner because we're not taught this stuff. Right. So if we look at personal guarantees, a personal guarantee means I'm personally liable for that debt that I'm taking on. Now, if I'm you know taking out a car loan, well, I'd expect that, right? Like I'm, I'm a person getting a personal car loan, et cetera. But when it comes to business debts, then as a business owner, what we want to do is we want to, and this is my advice, this is SCORE, Inc., Entrepreneur, any of them, we want to separate us from the business. That's why we have a different entity, for example, for the business. And once we create this separation, what we want to start doing is separating liability as well. So the business can take out debts, but the person, the business owner shouldn't be liable for that. Now, in the beginning, they are. But the key is to separate the credit profiles and create one for the business. 
And then in doing so, what happens is we start building this business credit profile up. And eventually the kind of business credit profile makes the business itself more lendable than the individual. So here's a simple example. If we look at Michael Dell, right? So obviously when Dell goes to get a hundred million dollar credit line, they don't go get Michael Dell's signature as a guarantor. And we all listen to this and go, yeah, guy, of course, like, no, nobody would do that. But we think that that's the case because Dell is Dell. But that's not the reality. If you look at Dell, you see hundreds and hundreds of accounts on their business credit report. So they started from nothing and they built a credit profile and paid back all these debtors as agreed. And then Michael Dell, all of a sudden, Dell comes and is more valuable. Their credit's more valuable than its owner to a point where the owner's just not even needed. Like the business can clearly stand on its own. And that's how we get away from guarantees. We get away from personal, uh, basically personally being liable for business debts by proving the business can stand on its own. Now the business can fund itself without guarantees, without credit checks from the business owner. And this helps us in large part separate the liability where if the business defaults on that debt. Well, the business is liable, but not the individual. And that's what happened to right. me, right? I personally guaranteed. So when the business defaulted on debts, they came after me individually. When we separate this, then the, the lenders can't come after the individual behind the, 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 the own behind the business. They can only come after the business debts. And it keeps our personal assets basically safe and secure. Makes sense. Yeah, because that, that's something that I've always was when I was getting those loans previously, I was like, wait a second, man, this is I feel like I'm I feel like I'm at risk. And that's where I think a lot of people, when they get into business, not understanding these kinds of things, they take on risks that they really shouldn't even be taking on, but they don't know any better. Um, and so that being said, I've been approached by a lot of people that have a, a startup business. It's a you know bootstrapping it. Uh, you know, they don't have any revenue yet, and they're saying, I need to go get business credit. Like that's the immediate thing that they think about is they got to go get like more capital, working capital, but their business doesn't have like any history. It might be a few months old, six months old, coaching business, something like that without a lot of uh, history. How does business credit work with someone like that who's in that position where they're getting going, but they don't have a lot of history in the business yet? That's one of the beautiful things. So when I saw, I basically summarize this as like my three C's cash acquisition formula. And, and this is just an easy way for any entrepreneur to know what kind of loans and credit lines you can get. Uh, it's based on three strengths, cash flow, credit collateral, all start with C, right? So when we want to get money for a business, we want to get a loan, we want to get a credit line, then a lender is going to need one of these three things. Now you go to an SBA lender, they need all three of the things. So we don't want to ever go to SBA until we're very well established. But in the beginning, if we have cash flow consistent for six months, we can get money. If we have good credit, we can get money leveraging that. If we have collateral like stocks or bonds or IRAs, equipment, inventory, we can leverage that to get money. But a startup typically doesn't have a lot of that. We've got, in often a lot of cases, damaged credit from the business owner because we're risk takers, like we're entrepreneurs. So our credit usually yeah. reflects that we're risk takers, especially in the beginning until we build a more stable business. We don't have any assets or collateral in a lot of cases. A lot of business owners pour everything they have into starting the business uh, and they don't have equipment and inventory and all that stuff yet. And then we also look at the third aspect, which is cash flow. And it's a startup. You don't have any cash flow yet. So what happens is you're not lendable. You don't have a lendable strength from, from a lender standpoint. What's nice about business credit is that none of that's applicable. So it's unsecure. You don't need collateral. There's no revenue verification whatsoever. So there's no income docs. You can get it as a new business. And it's not tied to personal credit. So I can get a $50,000 Amazon credit card and a $20,000 at Dell and $30,000 at Costco and a $20,000 Visa card and $200,000 in auto financing, none of which requires a credit check or a guarantee. So now there's no personal credit being pulled. There's no revenue verification. There's no collateral. So what's nice about business credit, and the reason you get that where somebody says, I need, I need to get a launch a business, I'm going to get business credit, is that those are people that are educated enough to realize that business credit is the best option to be able to fund the business because the other strengths they would need to get money, they just don't have. So that's what I like about business credit. It's a catch-all. Any business can get it. For-profit, non-profit, startup, massive business that's looking to expand, any business can get it. And then it's also what the biggest of the biggest businesses use to be able to scale and grow. Apple, Walmart, I mean, I can tell you stories about all of them, but it's, it's primarily how these big companies drive themselves to the, the, the levels of success that they have as well. All right. Yeah, it makes sense. How about hobby businesses? I know a lot of people that have a hobby business that does, you know, just not very much revenue. Um, it, you know, it's kind of in spurts, a couple thousand bucks here, 5,000, 10,000 here and there. 
um, if they're looking to grow that business and really expand it, but they need they need capital for marketing, uh, what what would be the kind of the time frame for them to go and get that in place to really do that? So I'll I'll give you an example. First of all, when, when we get into this. There's a difference between a, a hobby or lifestyle business and one that's really looking to grow. In a lot of cases, I've got a buddy, Jason, he owns a successful mastermind out here in Florida for real estate investors. Dude, he's chill, man. He just likes to be with his wife. He likes to be with his kids. He runs this mastermind. He makes a couple million a year. He, can, he makes good profits. He's never going to grow. He's never going to get money to expand. It's just not his vision. He likes to stay where he is, right? Then there's anybody else that wants to grow. And if you want to grow, you need capital. Like we can talk about any statistic that supports that if you need capital to grow and if you don't have it, you fail. I mean, that's, that's what it ultimately comes down to. So what we really look at there is that any business can get business credit. It doesn't matter what kind of industry you're in. It doesn't matter what kind of business you have. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like I said, if you're a profit or nonprofit, none of that makes a difference. All you need is a business owner wanting to grow and expand. And when you have somebody like that, then what we start looking at is what the business needs to be able to grow and expand. Now, you gave an example of marketing. So there's a great company out there called, uh, well, there's a couple of different companies out there. One of them is CEO Creative. And these kind of companies basically will offer you credit lines for marketing. Like there's a you know digital marketing company. So they'll actually give you a credit line to start actually running ads with them and be able to help you set up your funnels and your email sequences and all that stuff. And then they report that credit line to the business credit reporting agencies. As soon as you get yourself fundable, which could take a day, like a week, it depends on you, then you're ready to get that account. So that's account you can get the first week, for example, of building business credit. And the company, for example, is Creative Analytics. So CEO is one of them that I mentioned, but Creative Analytics, actually, you can get money for marketing. So this is something that somebody can get a week into the process and actually be able to get credit lines to be able to do that. Uh, over the road trucker can get a credit line for gas cards right from the beginning. I mean, there's there's so many different options. We're a week into the process; they're getting no personal guarantee, no credit check credit. Gotcha. Okay, so it can happen pretty fast. Obviously, the I'm I'm, I'm going to assume that the more business history you have, the more cash flow you have, the more uh, you know accounts you have set up and stuff, the more credit you can get. Yeah, absolutely. To, to both of your points, what the nice thing about business credit is that it does happen very fast. And it happens very fast because your credit scores are based on how you pay your bills. Like I like to call it aka common sense. Like if you look at your consumer FICO score, it's a disaster. Like if you look at the math of what makes up that score, it literally hurts you when you try to improve any aspect of it, right? Like credit mix is 10% of your score on the consumer side. So you try to go get new credit, then you have inquiries, and then that's 10% of your credit. So it's like you help help that part, hurt that part. In the business world, it's just how you pay your bills. It's that simple. Yeah. So we got to get accounts that report. When the accounts report, that gives us good scores. We use those reported accounts and those scores to get more and more credit. And the second part to, that's really interesting is what we found helping 50,000 business owners through this is the more credit you get, the more credit you unlock. Now, we named this and call this our tiering system. So our tiering system is a tier of the credit you can get depending on how many accounts you have. You have no accounts, you can get starter vendors. You get five starter vendors, then you can move to retail credit. Then you get you know eight of those accounts, now you move to fleet credit, et cetera. So the more credit you get, the more becomes available to you without a personal guarantee and credit check. And the more you're using that credit, the higher the future limits will be. I get $2,000 from Granger, or let's say 2,500. If I just give Granger a license, a business license, they'll give me $2,500 credit line. So I have $2,500 credit line. I go spend $2,000 on Granger. Then I go to apply for something else. They see I'm spending two grand with Granger. They give me a $4,000 limit. Then I start using three grand of that four grand and it just gets higher and higher and higher. So the more accounts we get, the more credit becomes available. The more we're using that credit, the higher and higher and higher the limits become. Uh, we had a guy approved for $350,000 at Ford. Uh, no personal guarantee, no credit check, just as an example to show kind of where it goes to. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, because I remember when I first uh, was in, becoming an entrepreneur, I had some businesses and I went to go do some things, but I had zero business credit. I had no credit. I had no profile. I had no credit profile. And I was like, oh, crap, what do I do? What's this all mean? I didn't really understand that space. So, a couple of uh, things to wrap this up. So how can a business start building their business, their credit profile, business credit profile, and then for those that are established businesses, how do they, you know, what, what are some good practices when it comes to uh, their credit profile and the score so they can actually work with someone like you to really build more uh, credit available to them? 
Well, the first thing is, no matter what it is, you're looking for business credit or money, you got to make sure your business is set up credible. We call this fundability. There's 120 aspects, too many to cover here. Uh, But everything you put on an application should reflect you have a credible business. Like you have a business address that's separate and a business phone number and a website that's professional and an email address and all the things that make you look credible, like a business, you know, everything that business license, a business bank account, you got to make sure every, all the information online about your business needs to be congruent. Like if I Google your business name, I, your phone number, the address, the name, every piece of data that pulls up should all be congruent. Those are just some of the basics of fundability. So once, once we do that, then the next step is we want to start getting starter vendor accounts. Uh, Granger, we talked about CO Creative, we talked about Creative Analytics. These are just some of these types of accounts you can use. Like There's Home also Depot, a short one. Go ahead. Like Home Depot? So like that, Home Depot is not a starter vendor. So no, starter no. vendors are people that have two very specific requirements. And like you said, you tried to get money and you couldn't because you didn't have a credit profile. I call right. that the trifecta. You get accounts like Granger that report to the reporting agencies. Right. That gives you a credit profile. That gives you a credit score. Those three things unlock Home Depot. But you can't go get Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, Dell, HP, uh, Costco, Nordstrom's offers based business credit, John Deere, Best Buy, Tiger Direct, you get the idea. You can't even name a retailer that doesn't offer business credit. But the reality is in order to get them, it depends on how many accounts you have. You're not going to get any of that credit until you have that basic foundation. And starter vendors will get you there. And I, we talked about five or six of them here. You can also shortcut the process to a program called Credit Line Hybrid. And this one will give you up to 150,000 in credit lines. You do use your good personal credit to get approved. None of the starter vendors need good credit, but this option you would. Either way you go, it doesn't matter. The goal is to get five accounts on that credit report. Once you have those, that opens up retail credit. It opens up fleet credit, fuel repair, maintenance of vehicles type credit. And then that opens up that final tier, which is called universal credit, Visa card, MasterCard, auto financing. Um, That's kind of the tiering system of how it happens and exactly how it goes down. Foundation, build that fundability foundation, starter vendors or credit line hybrid to get initial accounts and then move to retail credit, fleet credit, and then move to that final tier of universal credit. Gotcha. And so all that stuff... Then when you want to go to say a bank and get a line of credit, then all of a sudden, when they see this history, they see these accounts, all of a sudden, larger and larger amounts are available to you. Sure. I mean, if you think about it, imagine trying to go get a mortgage or a car loan without yeah. having any credit established as an individual, right? Like you can't, you, it's impossible to do. You cannot do it. I don't even think you can co-sign on a mortgage with no credit. Even if the person next to you that's signing with you has an 850 credit score, like you can't do it. So in the business world, uh, it's the same thing. Like you've got to be able to have credit to be able to get credit. So the more credit you get, the more it becomes available. Now, if I go into my bank to get a $500,000 credit line, I'll give you an example. Uh, We're getting an SBA loan right now today. As a matter of fact, the last thing I did was send a a, a stock ledger that was needed to finish the approval. Uh, Four days, four days for us to get 100, well, two loans for 150,000. Four days for us to get 300,000 just plopped into our account. Uh, And this is very common for us because that's what happens when you start building out your business credit, then other factors will be there. They'll look at my personal credit. They'll look at other things, you know, half a million dollar loan amount, but business credit's a big driver to getting approved. So once you get this down, then like we have, we have the ability within weeks or even days to go secure hundreds of thousands in funding because we've established enough business credit that we clearly have a history that reflects that we should be lent that amount of money. That's interesting because that sounds like almost like a bolt loan, SBA bolt loan, um, which I have some experience with as well. So yeah, it's interesting that you know the more business you're doing, the more revenue, the more doors are open, but additionally credit can also build that to that point. Um, yep. It's, a, it's an important factor. If you ever want to get loans and credit lines, even if you get approved without business credit, you're going to pay way higher rates than you would with business credit. So business credit, and I was just reading a quote by Forbes that says exactly the same thing. Like, you know, your fundability, the business credit quality, these things are what ties into how much money you get and the rates and terms you pay. So business credit's really the secret behind getting more approvals, getting better terms, and getting higher approvals. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, so one last thing I wanted to mention here or ask you. So and around the economy, the there's a lot of concerns about recession. We're heading into all these kinds of things, and a lot of consumers, I would say, are holding back. They're getting in, you know they're uncertain. But I'm seeing a lot of businesses really start to grow and expand. Now, from the outside looking in, the government is printing money. They're, they're printing money like crazy right now because one, they're not very good at their budget, but they're printing money, 
and that filters down, but I'm seeing it filter down through a lot of what we're talking about here, through the businesses, through uh, business credit. Uh, is that something that you're seeing right now, or, or how are you seeing business credit being um, um, impacted right now based on what we're seeing in the economy as we head into a potential recession? We really haven't seen lending tighten up. And it was interesting. I was in a conference three, four weeks ago in, in Las Vegas, and it was a banking conference with just big banks. And the bank, the, one of the topics, obviously, was the bank failures. The banks had just started to fail, these smaller regional banks. And uh, and these the big ones were on stage, you know, Chase, City, et cetera. And they're leaning in there, go, we see this as an opportunity. Like, we're doubling. They use words and language like we're doubling down. We're going all in. So what's happening is you're seeing that big banks are seeing these other banks that are pulling out or failing as an opportunity for them. And they're going more in. So we're not seeing approvals hard to come by. Uh, we are seeing obviously rates have increased a lot since last year because right. prime rate has doubled since last year. So the cost of money has doubled. So interest rates continue to climb as soon as the Fed it, it continues to increase the interest rates. Uh, but we're still seeing money is readily available. The key is you got to be positioned to get it. You got to be yeah. fundable. You got to build that business credit. You then have to know the 3C formula. You have to know the right kind of capital you're going to get. And when you combine those things of being prepared and being credible to get the money and knowing the money to get and where to get it, that's the formula really to being able to, to max out the approvals. But we still have clients securing legitimately a million over in just business credit for their business uh, and clients securing significantly more than that when they combine business credit with other kind of financing as well. Awesome. So one of the last things I would say based on what you just said is don't wait. If you have a business, want to get into business, start getting into business credit, start building that now, because it's one of those things when you need it, you want to have it. But if you don't have it, you can have to go build it. Yeah, couldn't have said it, couldn't have said it better. And that's one of the mistakes I see people make is they wait too long, then they need money. And then there's a process to get up to a point where they can get it. So the idea is to get yourself set up fundable and credible now start building business credit, and then yeah. you get money on demand, right? You get the money you need when you need it. And that when you need, it's very important to navigate what's clearly ahead of us. right now. Absolutely. Awesome. So Ty, how can the people learn more about what you do or how if they want to reach out to you? We, you know, we, we briefly covered business credibility, but if everybody wants to take a deeper dive, we've got a great resource. It's been downloaded over a million times. It's at creditsuite.com forward slash E-I-N. So creditsuite.com forward slash E-I-N, they can grab a free detailed walkthrough of business credit building. It provides more details on fundability, more starter vendors, and more vendors throughout the process. And basically, it's like the roadmap of the formula for somebody to build business credit. Awesome. Sounds good. Hey, Ty, appreciate it. Thanks so much for being here. That was awesome. Thanks, Brian, man. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the Living Legacy Podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.